All right, so we just went over uh, layouts. And the next thing we're going to do is talk about the rules engine, also known as event rules. So if you're curious what the rules engine is, you can click on that link and open it up. Um, the basics of it are is the rules engine allows you to automate your system's reactions using events and actions and an if this happens, then do that uh, logic engine, right? So what is an event? Well, there's different types of events in the system. Um, there are three different types of events. There's user events, there's default events, and there's system generated events, right? Um, so default events are events that are configurable. I mean, you can see them in the rules engine uh, and you can configure them. If you want to see the rules engine, let me open up the next witness client real fast. I'll show you guys where to find it. Uh, and you can also see the default events that have already been populated because it's a new system. So when you first install a system, uh, to get to the rules engine, you go to system administration, go to event rules, and all these events in here are default events. So they're things that are going to affect uh, your system's ability to basically work. Uh, the one kind of outlier is a generic event. A generic event is basically a create event API call. And the reason that's in by default is a lot of developers will use that to test uh, their integrations. So when a create event API call happens, you get a little notification over here. The rest of these are basically things that will affect your system's ability to work, right? Um, so going back to the default events list, that includes um, archive backup finish, device disconnected, uh, devices have an IP conflict. That means with two devices on the network have the same exact IP. Um, licensing issues, you don't have enough licenses or your license is expired. Uh, network issues, um, like you're having trouble communicating with a server or a camera or some part of the system as having a network issue. Um, server conflict uh, means you got two servers that are trying to compete for the same resources, maybe two separate systems on the same exact LAN. Uh, server failure, meaning a server shut down unexpectedly. Uh, server started, which means like a server started in the system, maybe after it's failed to come back online. Uh, and then storage issue. Uh, meaning there's some problem with uh, uh, one of your storage locations you have set up. Okay. Um, there are also system generated events. And these are events that are not configurable, um, but they will generate uh, notifications or emails, right? Um, generally notifications um, that are visible to system owners. So you're going to see them in the client when an issue has, has occurred. So uh, if I go to the local settings, in the client, you can see these um, because you can disable them. So if you go to the look and feel, or sorry, notifications, uh, here you can see, see the types of events that you get notifications about, and here are the storage ones, um, or the system notifications, sorry, so that you can disable these. So for example, if you haven't set your email address, um, and that's fine. You can see I got the system uh, notification here, email server not set. Not really critical to the system functioning, uh, but nice to know. Right, so those are system events. Uh, and the final type of event, system generated events, are user events. And user events are configurable events that the users can go in and set up. Uh, so based on a set of conditions, these events will trigger, right? And those are analytics events, uh, the generic event we referenced earlier, uh, input signal on device, uh, motion on camera, and then plugin event, which is only available in 4.0, with the metadata SDK and uh, video analytics plugins uh, and soft triggers. So we're gonna go over each one of these events independently, but that's a general overview of system rules and events. There's one other side to this with actions, so I'm gonna jump forward uh, real fast to give you a definition of what an action is, uh, just to make sure. Somewhere here. 108. Aha. So actions are the second part of a, a rule, right? Um, it allows you to create uh, rules to, spigger, to execute specific actions that are based off specific events. So when you look in the rules engine again, um, if I go to a rule, let's go to the generic event one, that's a good one. So event rules, and then I can search up here for, oh, by device, sorry. 
not by the rule type. So if I look at the event type generic event here, you'll see I have an event on the left and an action on the right, right? Um, I can configure the generic event. So generic event will come in um, and it's going to contain source information, caption information, and description information, and I can filter um, based off of that. So I can configure uh, the specific event that comes in to, to interact with a specific action. So, um, so that's uh, the rules engine. That's events and actions. We're going to go over individually how to set up each type of configurable uh, event and action next.